Hi, everyone, and welcome to this Indeed Jobcast. In the next 30 minutes, we'll discuss the purpose of a cover letter, the formula for a successful cover letter, and some best practices. I'm excited to introduce our guest speaker today, John Long. John is a professional career coach, program facilitator, and university instructor. His private coaching practice, Two Roads Resources, Inc., has offices in Atlanta, Georgia, and Jacksonville, Florida. He's the author of the book, Career Judo, the Martial Art for the Mindful Career. John's work with students and clients takes a strengths-based approach blended with elements of positive psychology and solution-focused change. And that's me, Brandy Cohn. I'm a manager on Indeed's Job Seeker Experience team. We're responsible for creating helpful resources like this job cast for our users like you. So take it away, John. Thank you so much, Brandy. And I just want to um, express my appreciation to Indeed for uh, presenting this uh, job cast. It's a really important topic that will help empower um, the users on the community and, and those that are using Indeed.com for their job search. Let's discuss the purpose of a cover letter. Um, and we also want to talk about when and how to include a cover letter in your application. As employers review applications and begin determining who they want to move on to the next phase of the hiring process, they typically consider three pieces of information. The first being the strengths and professional skills of the applicant. The second, your background which can include relevant experience, accomplishments, your education, and your training. And third, whether or not your personality, your interests, and your uh, goals align with the company culture. A strong resume is useful for identifying whether or not the candidate uh, has the necessary skills, the experience, the education, the training that an employer is looking for in their next hire but it doesn't offer much insight into that third piece uh, of the criteria, whether or not you'd be a good fit for the organization's culture. Including a cover letter helps uh, paint a nice picture of your interests, your career goals, and your motivation to obtain the position with this particular organization. The best way to capture an employer's attention and increase the likelihood that you'll be landing an interview is to um, offer a little bit about your unique story. A well-written cover letter will capture the hiring manager's attention and tell them who you are, what you care about in your career, and why you're a strong candidate for this particular role. To keep an employer's attention though, you also need to keep your cover letter concise and easy to read. Ideally, I like my clients to use three concise paragraphs that, you, that um, each can be read in about 10 seconds or less. The thought of writing a cover letter can be stressful. Um, how do you know what to say, what an employer is actually looking for to capture the interest and to make sure that, you re that they remember you? we recommend using a very straightforward formula in crafting the cover letter. We have the header, your greeting, attention grabber, your skills and qualifications, the wrap up to the letter, and your closing. Let's take a closer look at what each of these elements look like. First, we have the header. A good header includes your full name, your contact information, such as your current address, your phone number, email address, and the dates you're applying. And please only use one best phone number and one best email address so as not to confuse the process. Next, include a very simple greeting. If possible, use the hiring manager's first name, which you'll usually find on the job posting. But if you don't know the hiring manager's name, you can just use the simple title of hiring manager. Then it's time to write the first paragraph, the attention getter. In this paragraph, you'll want to introduce yourself, explain why you're applying for the position, and discuss how the position aligns with your career goals, your background, and be authentic and use enthusiasm in your language. If you have any mutual connections with the hiring manager, such as someone in your network uh, who referred you to the role or an existing employee at the company, mention them here. 
It's also a good idea to start your cover letter by highlighting an impressive accomplishment. Then uh, bring up a tidbit of newsworthy information about the company to show that you've done your research and you know a little bit about this organization. In the next paragraph, you wanna share an anecdote or brief story from your past that exemplifies your ability to face challenges and successfully accomplish an important task or goal and overcome the sorts of challenges you'll likely face in this new role. When you tell a story within your cover letter, always make sure to use the STAR method. And this is the same method that we use uh, for interview preparation. STAR stands for situation, task, assessment of the situation and the action that you'll be taking, and then the results. Use this technique to give your answers a deliberate story arc that hiring managers can easily follow. Craft your story to address the following questions. What is the context of your story? What was your role in the situation? What did you do? And what did your actions lead to? What were your results, your accomplishments? Let's take a look at uh, what this looks like in, a, in an example cover letter. Here in the second paragraph, the applicant discusses an experience from her current job. The situation being she is a lead project manager placed on a challenging project. The task, she managed the overhaul of the product's design and UX. The assessment and action, she ensured the project met its deadlines and eliminated process inefficiencies. And the overall results, she helped save the company more than $15,000. If possible, always try to include a quantifiable in your success statement. The second paragraph is a place to provide more context to the qualifications and skills you listed in your resume. It's where you should show how you gained your experience and your education and how it's prepared you for the role. A story is a useful method for presenting the information in a way that's engaging and memorable for the reader. Now it's time to, to look at your third and final paragraph, which is the wrap up. In this one, you want to close the curtain this is where you, should thank the, uh, where you should thank the employer for their time. And often stating that uh, you appreciate their time and consideration and you look forward to the next steps in the hiring process. You can also take this opportunity to provide any additional clarifications about your resume or provide context about the impact of COVID-19 on your employment. For example, you might want to explain gaps in employment. If possible, find a way to highlight how these gaps strengthen you as a candidate. If you have a gap in your employment history, the first thing to know is that you are not alone. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the vast majority of people, about 90%, have been unemployed at some point in their working age lives. Unemployment gaps in short-term jobs are common among working age people, and sometimes just an explanation laced in humility can serve you quite well. A basic template uh, for this is stating uh, is starting with the reason that this gap uh, occurred and why you're not employed and followed up by what you did during this gap. Maybe you left to be a caretaker, uh, caring for children or aging parents. We have multiple life roles with competing priorities and now you are making uh, your career the priority. You were laid off by an employer. Uh, keep a positive tote. It is common today for organizations to restructure. Uh, maybe you were let go by your employer. Uh, and this gave you time to reflect upon how you can grow from the experience and be more determined in your career going forward. You took time off for personal reasons. And this allowed you to engage in activities that provided opportunities for learning and growth. And then absolutely, uh, which will be more and more common seeing people that were laid off due to COVID-19. This is where you can communicate um, your resilience and your determination to move forward in your career. Finally, finish strong with a respectful and straightforward close, using terms like sincerely, regards, best, respectfully. Thank you, thank you for your consideration. These are all excellent closings. Your goal is to remain friendly, but also keep your tone formal and professional. And here's a recap of that formula template that we discussed earlier. We have the header, the greeting, 
the attention, gra- uh, the attention grabber, skills, qualifications, the wrap up, and your closing. Let's talk a little bit about the best practices as you're crafting your cover letter. Once you finish writing your cover letter, take the time to redo it for spelling and grammar errors. Don't rely completely on spell check. Then review it again to ensure that it flows nicely and sounds clear and professional. If possible, ask one of your friends, family members, colleagues, peers to take a look at your letter and just proofread it one more time for you. You may notice that not all job postings request a cover letter, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't include one. Cover letters help you stand out from dozens or hundreds of candidates applying for the same role. It helps you communicate your personality, but it also shows that you're willing to go the extra step, a quality every employer is eager to see. Be sure to read the job posting very carefully. Sometimes employers ask applicants to write about something very specific within the cover letter, such as a challenge that you've overcome or why you're interested in that particular, in a particular aspect of the job. They do this often for two reasons. They're evaluating candidates based on this criterion, um, or they want to see whether you're paying attention to the actual detail of the job posting. If you're, um, if you're too generic in your cover letter, it will be harder to grab and keep the hiring manager's attention. Your goal is to be memorable for a good reason and stand out from other applicants and show the employer you're interested in this role including keywords the employer used in the job description will further position you as a good fit. And that's yet another reason that it's essential to read the job posting carefully. In some cases, an employer's application software may not allow you to attach additional documents, or they may specifically request that you do not include a cover letter. There are, uh, these are the only instances in which uh, it makes sense not to send a cover letter, Otherwise, preparing a cover letter can only benefit you. It shows that you're going the extra step and you're trying to communicate that fit that you have with this job posting. Indeed actually has a database of over 300 sample letters. Uh, They're organized by job title, so you can take a look and get some inspiration. One common question we have uh, that we often hear from job seekers is, should you write a new cover letter for every single position that you apply for? Well, it's important to personalize each cover letter. It may be helpful to prepare a general template. The background experience, your education, your core skills that you highlight will likely remain the same, especially if you're applying to multiple roles within the same field or the same profession, but don't send the same generic letter for every employer. Uh, It's critical that you include keywords that you're specifically pulling from the job posting. You might also choose to share different stories or successes depending on what the employer is seeking in their job posting. So prepare the template and then tweak that particular letter for each job posting. Another question you may be wondering how you should send your letter uh, once you've written it. Be sure sure to carefully follow the submission instructions in the job posting. If you're uploading your application to an applicant tracking system, which is very common, attach the cover letter as a PDF. Be sure to name and save the letter as something clear and professional, for example, John Smith cover letter, and then the date. If you're being asked to submit your application via email, reduce the steps by sending the cover letter as the body of your email rather than attaching it to the message. You may also be curious about the overall length. Uh, Is there such a thing as a cover letter that is too short or too long? It's essential that your cover letter be concise and easy to read. If it is the very first thing that a hiring manager is going to look at, it has to invite them in to read the document. Ideally, your cover letter should be no more than three paragraphs or a single page. A good rule of thumb, uh, as mentioned before, is to make sure that each of your paragraphs can be read in 10 seconds or less. The hiring manager reading your letter is likely reviewing several applications, again, if not hundreds of applications, and the easier you can make the experience, the better impression you'll leave. And what about the font? 
selecting a font for your cover letter can be a little bit tricky. Keep it simple, but make sure that it's professional. Additionally, because some employers may be relying on software to automatically sort job applications based on keywords, it's essential that you make it easy for that uh, software to crawl through your letter. Steer clear of using fancy or decorative fonts or italics as, you're, as these are often difficult to read, both for software and for human beings. Arial, Calibri, Helvetica, Verdana, these are all really nice choices for the cover letter. Looking for a new job can be a very time-consuming process. Uh, we, it can be tempting to skip the cover letter step, especially when you know that you, are strong, that you have a strong resume that is filled with uh, impressive job history and several accomplishments. But remember that employers want to know more than just your skill set, your job history, and your education, um, even if you are highly qualified. These elements are crucial in the decision-making process, but it's only part of the story. Hiring managers also are looking for clues about your personality and how you might fit in with their team, their division, their organization. When determining who will move on to the next step in the hiring process, employers want to know whether uh, you share the same values that align with the mission of the organization. A cover letter will help you convey all, all of this information. It will help, you make, it will help to make you uh, unforgettable in a really good way. Thanks, John. So now we're gonna take some more questions from the community. So first up, I always seem to give too much information to my cover letters and don't hold enough back for the interview. What information is best left out of a cover letter? Well, again, make sure that you're using that formula that we're presenting with the three um, focused, uh, concise paragraphs. Um, you don't need to go into too much background of, about your education, your training, your experience, because that information is in your resume. So you might want to use the, the space on the cover letter to really focus on your story, communicate a little bit about your personality, your strengths, and maybe a key accomplishment or two. Second question here. Do keywords in the cover letter get picked up by the applicant tracking system? Absolutely. So any of the documents that go through the applicant tracking system, particularly the resume and the cover letter, will be scanned for those keywords. So I'm always telling my clients to make sure that they're reading the job posting um, and uh, identifying the keywords in that job posting so that they're infusing that information into both their cover letter and their resume so that it will uh, be seen as a nice match for the software crawl. Great. I know recruiters don't want to see what you already have written in your resume on your cover letter, but they also want to know why your experience makes you the right fit. How do you make sure you're not just repeating yourself? Well, again, with the cover letter, you want to be concise. So say, for example, that the, um, the job posting really highlights project management, information analysis, and communications. Make sure that that second paragraph uh, in your cover letter really allows that information to stand out, whether you're infusing it into a short paragraph or you're using bullet points to convey that you have those skills to offer on day one. And here's one I'm hearing a lot. Uh, how do I write a cover letter that grabs attention and is not immediately dismissed due to lack of experience when I'm breaking into a different or new field? Well, this is where um, your ability to tell your story and your ability to have that attention grabber. So again, if you have been referred to the organization by someone, make sure you mention that. Uh, if you are mentioning something about recent news where an organization is expanding into a new product line or they're expanding into a new geographic area, they've won an award, this is where you might want to mention that. Uh, and, this draw, and this drew your interest uh, further to the position. Great, and we'll do one more here. If I am applying for multiple positions within the same company, should I write a unique cover letter for each position? If so, how much overlap is acceptable? And should I address that I'm applying to multiple, multiple positions in that company? 
Well, again, you're using that same template. If it's, if it's the same type of jobs or what we call cousin careers that, that are closely aligned to one another, use the same template, but definitely tweak it somewhat for the particular job posting. So if one is for an analyst, one is for a project manager, and one is for a marketing representative, you want to um, adapt the attention grabber, adapt some of the information about your core skills, strengths, and accomplishments um, to make the letter uh, somewhat unique for each of those positions. Uh, it doesn't hurt to mention that you are applying for multiple positions within the company, um, but follow that up by saying that you're just very interested in coming on board with this organization and you want to be of value to the organization. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And, you know, it only shows how much you are interested in being part of that uh, yeah. company. And Absolutely. it's a really good opportunity to showcase some of that research you did up front. So hopefully we were able to answer all of your questions in this presentation, but if not, continue to post them on the Indeed community at go.indeed.com slash cover letter. If you found this to be helpful, check out our other job casts. Our next one is on changing careers, so you can register for that if you're interested and watch recordings from past webinars on the Indeed Jobcast page. That's go.indeed.com slash jobcast. And finally, we've curated relevant tips and information about addressing the impacts of COVID-19 on your job at indeed.com slash here to help. It's important that you know you're not alone and we're here for you. And last but not least, I want to thank John Long. Thank you for joining us and uh, sharing his wisdom today. John, tell our audience a bit about how they can hear more about you. Well, um, it's a pleasure to um, serve as one of the facilitators within the Indeed community. So if you have questions, um, I'm in there regularly throughout the week answering questions from uh, members of the community. Um, you can also learn more about my background and my services at my website, explore2roads.com. Um, again, my book, Career Judo, the martial art for the mindful career, the website there is careerjudo.com. And then I encourage folks to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always looking to expand my network. I'm really uh, pleased to be able to present today and uh, be a part of the JobCast series. Thanks again, John. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Indeed's YouTube channel to see more helpful videos for your job search.